I've suspected for quite some time that former Senator Joseph Biden abused his political office while he was senator, specifically in his uh, role for intelligence as part of the Senate Intelligence Committee, and used what he acquired as part of his committee performance as uh, personal advantage, including in connection with a sort of hedge fund strategy that was set up, that I contend he agreed to loan out uh, or leverage as the vice president under Barack Obama with an understanding that were the option for Hillary Clinton not to be uh, effectuated at the time it was, it would leave open the option for him to become president. And then the uh, option for allowing a woman to become president, which I understand was supposed to be Hillary Clinton, based upon a predetermined understanding of what would be permitted as a woman president of the United States under that system, uh, would no longer be available and would cede to the vice presidency, just as he ceded to the vice presidency when Barack Obama became elected. But a problem emerged, I contend, in uh, 2015, and part of it had to do with options that may have actually been more appropriate for his actual son, his firstborn son, and that his son had to be eliminated, where the option for him personally to become president to be able to be effectuated. And this is uh, one of the reasons why Bo Biden was murdered when he was, and it was treated the way it was treated. And now we are where we are. Um, apparently, there were also reports that were provided that of addressed organized crime. I found a PDF of a congressional committee uh, a hearing during the two th uh, 1980s regarding organized crime, specifically in Chicago. I found this several months ago. I did not find that today. I found other reports, including through the... Uh, government accounting office regarding congressional hearings or reports connected to organized crime from 1986 and 1987, both of which include letters addressed directly to Joseph Biden as senator. Now, these aren't backdates, are they? Well, you know, here's the thing. If they are backdates, then that just provides greater evidence to the elements of the conspiracy. But if they are authentic, is it true? Did members of Congress identify children in abuse of the Youth Trust for a Drug-Free America and make us their personal assets so they could harvest our life for options as part of their political hedging strategies and or as part of kickbacks to people that had offered them bribes while they were in public office? And so has Joseph Biden specifically in connection with these deals and these trades and these loans that were made with other people. Literally traffic me personally for the 30 years. See, because here's the situation. If that's the truth, and these timelines also correlate with a report that was released in the summer of 1994, 1993 to 1994, which means that when they had that mock trial at Quantico, Marine base, did they literally set it up to try to use me and my life in the future as political risk insurance directly in connection with what was going on in the investigations of Bill and Hillary Clinton? And they've just been trying to pimp me as part of their political risk insurance ever since? See, Part of the capacity to avail yourself of using somebody for political risk insurance means that there's also a risk that you're going to be exposed as being a charlatan who has stolen what you have from somebody else. And I think now we've gotten to that point where the refusal to actually be accurate with things that would have been necessary in order to qualify at certain levels has caused a very substantial and very substantial very significant default here and what this also proves unfortunately like it or not is that when i sent that package to the department of justice my understanding was i sent it to the department of justice with one specific understanding of the implications involved but intended in there was a uh, writ habeas corpus that included a bill of exception that I understood included information that would have been applicable and would have been 
it would have necessitated an intercession of those that were qualified on the level of the Department of Defense to understand its national security implications. But then I went to the Department of Justice and I did it in a time frame that meant benchmarks that had already been set up regarding a military standards manual and it was intentionally refused because I contend it was used illegally as part of other cases connected to municipal bond insurance that were then pending in bankruptcy proceedings and they intentionally delayed an indication that it had been received despite the fact that it had been received in enough time to make that benchmark and to meet the needs that would have been needed to have been met in order to prevent it from a fatal national security event, i.e. the shooting in Florida, so that they could use it as illegal underwriting as part of offsetting liability associated with those bankruptcy proceedings involving AMBAC. It was the same week, and you've been covering it up ever since. And very shortly after that, there was a notice in the Federal Register about some sort of financing program for the Department of Justice. A literally, I believe, a hedge fund strategy for the, uh, for the Department of Justice that I contend has done nothing more than cover up for massive, massive, massive crime in order to provide political risk insurance to people who have infiltrated the government with the absolute intent of undermining its solvency in order to avail themselves of personal advantage, as well as provide kickbacks to people who offered them bribes or supported them in their efforts to undermine the federal government with an understanding that we would be exactly where we are right now. I'm just letting you know, right? It was completely unacceptable and it's not going to be able to stand.